Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. So the project for today is going to be something I've been working on for a while. And it's going to be part of a larger project, but I had to make a prototype first. So I've been a fan of robots and science fiction basically my whole life. But one of the things that really got me into it was a movie called Robot Jocks back in the 90s. So basically it's like a post-apocalyptic world and all the nations they fight by using these giant robots controlled by like the robot jock pilots. So if you think like Pacific Rim without all the aliens. So the little robot arm I made for this project is inspired by the robot Alexander from the movie. And like I said, this is gonna be part of a kind of an unrelated project that I'm working on for later on. But I got this cube from Ford Solid, which was a Kickstarter campaign that I backed a few months ago. And basically it's like a solid cube of like 95% like uh, aerospace grade tungsten. So it's just a really heavy dense cube of metal. And it really serves no purpose other than like a desk weight or a paperweight. And so I thought making a small little arm to hold it would be kind of cool. So let's jump into making the arm in CAD first. So I'm not going to go step by step through the CAD. I'm just going to go kind of a highlight because it'd be kind of boring to watch, you know, every, every step of it. So I started off with just some objects here to kind of get mimic the kind of shape I'm looking for. I'm not trying to reproduce the, you know, the robot arm exactly. It's just kind of inspired by the character in the movie. I'm just kind of eyeballing the dimensions and the proportions, just trying to get something kind of close. So here I just did a small sketch, just kind of the outline of one of the fingers. And then I'll just multiply that, you know, array it around the, uh, the end here. And here you can see once you get all four of them put on there, what it's starting to kind of look like a, a hand here. And now for the next joint, you know, I'm just adding a cylinder that just has the same radius that matches this sphere. So it'll be able to rotate around. And there's a little detail on the shoulder of the robot in the movie that had a kind of a look kind of like a fan or something like that. And so I just made one blade and then made a pattern of them around the, the axle. And now most of the steps from here on out are pretty much just cleaning out material, adding some details and joints. You know, I added some detail around the rings and then did some fillets and some chamfers and kind of made things look a little bit better. And some of this detail is going to get lost in the final 3D print, but I'd rather have more detail in the model than not have enough. And so basically all of these last steps were cleaning out the material and breaking apart the different objects. Because the company I used to do my 3D printing, you know, they charge by the size of the, the overall object and also, you know, by the material that you use. So there, you know, there's minimum requirements for thickness. So the, the least material you can use, the better, but you also want it to be strong enough to hold its own form. So I can hear, you can see I hollowed out a lot of these parts. So if I get rid of the hand, you can see I hollowed out this sphere, but there's little lips in here that let the, the other piece rest on top of it, and that corresponds to this piece, so it will fit right in there. And then everything's hollowed out just to make it more affordable to print. And so I can go ahead and have this, you know, printed in this orientation as one solid object, but I want the ability to be able to move the joints around and position it how I want before I glue it all together. So if I go over to the assembly, I took all the individual pieces then I added just one millimeter uh, sprues in between all the pieces. So that way when they 3D print it, it'll all come to me in, in one little kit. And just like any like, you know, model kit you buy, you can just cut off or grind off these sprues, clean up where they, they meet the, the part, and then you have your individual pieces. Because a lot of times you get charged if you do, you know, printing per part as well as, you know, overall material and overall size. So it's more economical to print all the pieces connected like this versus printing, you know, six or seven different files. And you can see here the fingers, they have a little slot and a radius here and that matches this disc and radius here. So the fingers kind of sit on here and you can rotate them around and position them how you want and then glue them in place. And so in the description box, I'll have a link. You can go and check out the, the finished model over on Shapeway's website if you want to buy one of these kits and put it together yourself. So here's what the print looks like when it came in the mail. The details came out really good and the, the sprues that hold it together were surprisingly strong. So the first step was to go through and cut off all the sprues connecting the pieces. I ended up using wire cutters and then just twisting off the excess. The material is called strong and flexible plastic and it is pretty strong so you can just twist it apart fairly easily. To clean up the sprues where they connected to the part, I used a dremel and a grinding wheel. I also did some final details with a piece of sandpaper and a small file but the Dremel by far took off the material the easiest. And after you sand it down, you can't even tell where it was connected to the other parts. Once I got all the pieces cleaned up, I laid them out and made sure I got all the extra bits and pieces cleaned up off of them. 
And here you can see how they all fit together. So the round piece can just float right inside of the, the wrist joint. And then this fits right inside of that piece, so you can rotate it and move all the joints to the position you like. And then the fingers sit on the little ridges that I showed in the model. You know, it's not strong enough to stay like this permanently, but definitely enough to be able to position the parts and kind of figure out how you want it to look and what, what grip you want it to be holding. I was really impressed with the detail that came out in the final print. You can see lots of the small ridges that were printed and the, the details on the edging. And now to glue the model together, I'm using Gorilla Super Glue, and I think just regular Super Glue would work as well. And then I'm using these small little brushes I got at the hobby shop to apply the Super Glue, but you could use a toothpick or really anything else. The main thing is just don't Super Glue your fingers together or Super Glue yourself onto the plastic. And I haven't tried it, but I think like a plastic model cement glue might work as well. But basically what it does is it melts the point where the two pieces of plastic touch together against the glue. So it's a very permanent bond. And so now I'm just positioning all four fingers where I want them to be on the hand. And then using the applicator, I'm just dabbing a little bit of super glue and then putting it back onto the hand where I want it. And being very careful not to glue my fingers onto the plastic. And once you hold it for a few seconds, it hardens and it's a, a permanent bond. When the hand's complete, it's gonna be holding quite a bit of weight. So I put a little bit of glue in the around all the joints and this kind of melted the plastic together and really made it just one solid piece. It's probably not necessary if it's just gonna be sitting holding its own weight though. Now for this piece, you can see the small ridges that I showed in the model right here. And this is where the, the next piece sits against that. And this keeps the upper part from falling inside this sphere. And so this allows you to kind of place it in there and then rotate it around until you get to the point where you want it to be, you know, for your final pose. And I used a small pencil just to make a mark where I wanted, and then afterwards I scraped that off with a razor blade. Just so once I took it apart to add glue, I knew where to put it back. And now to add the final joint, so this can rotate anywhere around any orientation that you want it to be. So I just picked a pose that I thought would look nice based on how I'm going to mount the whole thing, and then glued it like that. And for this one, I just added glue right to the plastic from the bottle and then spread it around with the applicator. And so next up was a way to mount this hand. You know, I want it mounted basically on like a wall. So at the craft shop, I found these wooden discs and they're nice and round and they're, they have a nice finished edge. And so it's gonna mount kind of like you see people, you know, with like a deer antlers or something like that, you know, mounted on their wall. And so the first thing was just to find the center. And I just used a compass to find the center point. And then I just drilled a small hole through the center. Now to mount the plastic arm onto this disc, I used a half inch diameter wooden dowel. And that matches the, the hole in the end of the arm. And so I just cut off a section off of a longer dowel, drilled a hole through it, and then countersunk the end so the screw will sit inside of the wood dowel and not interfere with the plastic, you know, arm sitting on the end. And so I screwed this onto the wooden disc. And here you can see the half inch diameter hole in the arm fits right on top of the wood dowel. And then you can rotate it around and position it exactly how you want. And I didn't even end up gluing this on in the end, it just pressure fit right on there. So I didn't have any black spray paint, but I had this jar of like kind of charcoal colored paint that I got from Target. So I just applied a bunch of layers of that onto the wooden disc, letting it dry between each layer. It's acrylic paint, so it really didn't take too long between each layer. After all the layers are dry, I used a can of clear spray acrylic and gave it a nice coat to, to clear over it and it really smoothed out the paint and made it look nice. And then here you can see the arm fits right on top of that dowel. And then there's also a small hole you can see drilled in the back of the wood disc that lets you mount it right onto the wall. Alright, so I put a nail on the wall and hung it right on there. And the last thing is to put in the tungsten cube that I got from the Kickstarter campaign. And it fits right into the grippers. And so I'm really happy with it. So I have a place to display the cube and also a kind of cool robot arm kind of mounted onto the wall. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this project if you have any questions. And I'll have some other cool projects coming up, you know, using some 3D printing and a couple of robot arms kind of mixed in with my other content on the channel. All right, so I'll have a link down in the description box for the arm kits if you want to put one of them together yourself. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll be back soon with a new one. Thanks. 
Thanks for watching! To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support the creation of these videos, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page. Thanks!